Fairies and Sounds Fee magazine. I've got false advertising with me here. Hello. Hey. Going back to the beginning, how did the band form? It formed. Well, we, us three, um, used to be in a band uh, with a fourth member like several years ago. Um, and we were all kind of like mutual friends with Chris, I guess. Yeah, that's how yeah, it started. Yeah. Um, so he kind of brought us together and we, we played a couple of gigs, or maybe three gigs. And we, we had. Um, we did quite a few rehearsals and that was quite fun. Yeah. yeah. So that was the main thing of that band and we wrote a few songs. But um, it didn't quite work out. I don't think um, we were all necessarily into it for the right reasons. Um, and I, I don't think, um, in hindsight, I don't think I was really into the style of music we were doing. So it was, it was a good thing really. Yeah, I mean it's... Um, the way it did. Yeah, it was, it was certainly uh, at the beginning, of the, it was the keystone of what we are now. Of yeah. It was the, what, everything has a starting point, doesn't it? But, um, there were some concurrent ideas that we all had, and yeah, we decided to get back together, and here we are now. What was the point where you thought to yourselves, right, we've, we've got the sound now we want, and we're going to build the songs around this sound, when you were practicing the free feats? Well, the interesting thing actually I should point out before we got to that point was that Chris and I both played guitar in that band, oh, right. and we had a drummer, so um, I guess part of the thing that informed the way that we sound now is that we both decided we would become drummers. And that's why it took us so, so long to get our stuff together because we both weren't super experienced at drumming. In terms of the songwriting process for false advertising, is it, would you say it's more organic than that now? So you kind of like get a bit of an idea then you bring it in or is it kind of nearly fully developed or...? What would you say, Josh? <laughs> um, it's, well, it's, it's, we've got a bit of a rule, an unwritten rule really, because um, it's made to be broken I guess where whoever writes the bulk of the song will probably front it. I've got also got the luxury of Jen and Chris swap being able to swap over. In terms of like recording, who, who plays the drums on what song? Who decides that? It's um if you've seen us live it we always do the same thing as who's whoever's recorded it. So um so yeah I, I do front the majority but things like um give it your worst which is like our ended up being our sort of most popular single from the last EP um Chris Play, plays guitar on that and I kind of sing from the drum kit a right. bit so so it's a bit of a mixture really. The bigger gigs you do, you play with the bigger bands, the quality of the music gets higher I guess you could say because obviously they're doing well for a reason these bands. Would you say that that affects the songwriting quality with you guys as well because you're having to keep lifting yourself up to these other bands and it gives you more ideas or? It's, that's an interesting question. I think um, it's not something Consciously, no. we are trying to do. I think we all just sort of believe. I mean, if you play, I think we played like 60 gigs last year, and I mean that's not a lot compared to a lot of bands in the world. But for us, like we've never even done anything like that. So no. you have to really trust that your what you're doing live and what you're experiencing yourself playing live and what you're seeing around you, like other bands doing, other bands you meet, really does help you. And I know him. Um, I know it does inspire me when I see people I've met doing really well. 